Hello, welcome back. The vetoes took a lot longer than expected. Yeah, some minor confusion. Uh, uh, a little bit, I guess. But it's going to be Frozen Temple, and they actually listed the Frozen Temple and a Frost into Dasan Station. Ooh, interesting. There is the countdown timer. Yeah, so as we get into this game, it is the loser's match. So just reminding everybody, whoever gets this best of three as a loss will also be out of the tournament. Now, there's some confusion in chat about WCA's involvement with other things. It's not. We thought it was for a while, too. There was a lot of misinformation. And I shouldn't even say that. It was a lot of inconclusive information that was left open-ended to make it sound like it was. WCA, as far as I'm aware at this point now, is not part of WESG. So some questions during the break, like, are there? why was there no NA qualifiers? What's going on? This is an independent tournament strictly for Europeans. It's got a $15,000 prize pool. And that's pretty much where it comes full stop. Any other involvement beyond that is something I'm not aware of at this point. We thought was the case, but isn't. So hopefully that answers some of the questions. But of course, you guys still always write in Team Liquid and hope to get a better answer. Alex, uh, I think his name's like Alex US or Alex 007 or something on there. He'll be the guy to look for for answers because he's the one who's organized it. Uh, but at any rate, welcome back to the losers match for the WCA. Uh, group A, spawning in the top left side is going to be the blue Terran player, Euthermal. He's thermy. On the bottom right, as the Teal Protoss, he is Sake. Now, as mentioned before, I think you Thermal versus Sake is going to be a completely different looking match than you Thermal versus Harstam for a couple of different reasons. Number one being Harstam's good decision making, his deflection on you Thermal's attacks, all of these things just went really well for him and kind of almost too perfectly in some instances, right? But Sake. I, not only do I question like whether he can respond to you thermal throwing some weird things out like say cyclones or those two base pushes, but he also might get a little bit more aggressive himself. Whereas Harson wasn't really rushing to attack, Saki might. Yeah. Oh, uh, what happened? Did S C B die? Oh wow. Looks like that was the case. Oh. No, wait. Workers killed. He killed his own worker, I think. On accident. Well, because there's no workers killed, and it doesn't get oh, counted, but there's man. a corpse there, right? I'm not crazy. There was a corpse there, right? There definitely was a corpse, and, like, it's possible he tried to repair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he tried to yeah. repair, and instead he killed him. Uh, well, yeah, you did. Sorry, I can't confirm, but <laughs> it feels bad. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Because, yeah, when you hit Control r it doesn't show up over there, but... So that's that's kind of funny and unfortunate. Uh, is SCV going to get a scout followed by, quickly by a reaper? So it's it's actually arguable that he even needed to SCV scout, but I can't tell if this guy is saying he can't see the SCV killed or he's being a little bitchy think... and saying you can't see, you can't use your eyes. No, no. <laughs> um, so actually, the Viking TV folks are very new <laughs> casters from Sweden. And I'm yeah. just, that's why I was kind of giggling at their, the naivety and the innocence earlier. So here, I think it's the same application. I don't think it's the case. I think what they're saying is they can't see it on the control car, like when you look at the worker's the kill tab. Option. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I it doesn't actually show up over there. 99% sure and 1% kidding about the latter. Yeah, <laughs> I don't but think I anyone sure be. the other I people did. tuning in understand. Um... Okay, I thought the other person was going to follow up with something, but they don't. Never mind. Ah, nice pro block. Almost works. It is going to work. <gasps> that stalker popped at the exact right time because that region was kicking in. We have a middle of the road kind of build here for you, Thermal. So, not the quickest medevacs, not the uh, most amount of bio units either, and a pretty evenly timed stim. So, the okay, has maybe like what? Like a minute more than a Wood of Mine drop to just take things slowly and calmly and not have to really worry about much, but still eventually he's gonna have to worry about what is going to be a direct push, you know, like up the ramp and into his natural. Or his third, should he take it too quickly? Oh. Is that me? That must be me. It's me. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me okay? Now I can. Um, definitely some internet connectivity problems. It was all red, all red and obs, but apparently it's done now. It dropped. Yeah, you frames. didn't. You didn't like in games, so I was, I was a little unsure as to what was happening there. Yeah, I definitely was on stream, <laughs> and uh, all good if I didn't actually appear. I don't know what that was about. 
Uh, anywho, storms, not storms. I was thinking thunderstorms. Metavacs are on the way. And Stim is going to be paired up, of course, nicely with it. I was going to talk about, I guess, this location here. Uh, Ethereal was originally on, and then he backs up from... So I has to be careful. Again, this isn't this isn't a wood of mine drop, you know. You you do have some decent production to take care of, of, of a small attack with, and Sake is doing a small attack. But oh my god, she gets caught right away. Wow, you thermal gets completely destroyed, GG. utterly. So Jeez. GG. <laughs> well, that worked out. That was that was, that was so. Okay, well, I can understand you, so I don't mind. I'm not the one streaming. Okay, well, it the stream like you... is back up. I don't think it went down. No, I definitely read down. It went down for 10 seconds. One and a half minutes from now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit awkward. If you guys can hear us, do us a favor. And let everyone else know in chat. Just hit that refresh button. It should bring these right back up. Hopefully, these hiccups are not going to continue, but at least it didn't happen during the game. Yes, it happened as the game ended. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, as I said, I, I don't know what's causing it. This actually has been happening around midnight. I remember for the NA casts, for whatever reason. But there's no thunderstorms. There's no one else in the house. What is this lobby? Oh, it doesn't have the game heart. It looked it like he invited me to a... Uh... Oh, okay, then maybe that's bad and I'm messing up for me. But it looked like he invited me to a lobby called L. Because Frost didn't show up either. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Uh, if I do end up just disconnecting entirely, that'd be bad news. Because Rifkin uh... literally can't stream. I might be able to do it with so many other observers. I should be able to hop onto like Naruto's camera or something in the worst case scenario. I remember how painful that was for you to do the last time. Yeah, but I didn't have a camera to hop onto. Like it's using the mouse that's painful, not anything else. Yeah, I guess so. I just, uh, I don't know, because it, it's it's also not exactly soup. It's about halfway into the cast, I guess. But it'd be another four hours if I did drop out right now. Well, it's just not happening. Cross your fingers and hope you don't. Don't say it like that either. Like you're trying to startle your connection. Oh like... my god! So it's like it's got hiccups, you know. So you gotta scare it. It's exactly what it is. All right. In the bottom right, on Frost, he is the TL Protoss. Okay. And his opponent spawning in the top right, gonna be the blue Terran player, Ethermal. Yeah. That, that type of game happens. It happened in a uh, pretty big tournament, I want to say, like I Am or DreamHack, like four or five months ago, right? Um, maybe even longer than that. I, I just remember, like, Mana gets a 3 0 in one of the games. The poor Terran, like, tries to send out meta pack drops. <laughs> and Mana's, like, right there at Blink Stalkers. It happens once every couple of hundred games, if I had to guess. So, not like the rarest thing in the world, but, you know, not exactly super common. So, usually, you Thermal feels very confident pushing out like that. Keep in mind that Euthermal also usually, the typical medevac drop direction is to the north, you know? To the right of his base, not to the south of his natural, where Yusaka was coincidentally warping in. And if he had been paying attention a second sooner, he would be boosted back to his, his natural and would have unloaded and probably, you know, the game continues, whether or not Zaki can do something with Loaf over Blink Stalkers, but... Um, did, did they even have Blink? <laughs> They were just regular stalkers. Point is, that shouldn't happen again. And I know you... It's, it's kind of funny, too, because you went over, like, this big spiel uh, about how, like, there was think, different TVPs. I think he did have Blink, actually. He might have. I think he was trying to attack with it. That's why you do the attack. But I'm not even sure he needed to use it. Maybe to catch that one last medevac. But the point is, um, it doesn't happen that often. You have to have some advance notice to see something set up like that. And he just... Was coincidentally warping in at the same time Euthermal was leaving. So of course Euthermal does the same build again if he does, which he might. No, I don't think he is. He's gonna go for factory. Never mind. Uh, would be a lot more paranoid. Would like send out a marine first to see where the army was. But it's going to be a wood of mine drop here. 
Euthermal usually does one of my drops too, so it kind of sucks that like the game that he decides to mix things up, not with a cyclone build, not with a one of my drop, is the game that he gets utterly denied, utterly completely denied. Two viewers resub while you were away. I noticed that too. So in the 10 second hiccup, it must have just been like an auto renew for people who aren't around actually watching to share the sub thing. So I'm like, that's odd. Twitch alert should have picked that up. Yeah. Boop All right, well, for you thermal, I mean, it's it's really harrowing, right? You just lost a game to that and something, a game like that, no less. It feels really bad, but it's the loser's match too. He can't afford to make any mistakes in this game, whether they're coincidence, luck, or skill base. Yeah. Yeah, that was... On one hand, it's a game where just like, well, at least I know he didn't outplay me, he just got lucky. But on the other, it is something that's extremely tilt-inducing. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, I, mean, I just, just got lucky. Yeah, waiting for your opponent. Yeah. But... I have great faith in Ethereum to bring it back 2-1. I also have faith in Zaki taking that kind of almost freebie win. He really did get quite lucky. And doing something else in a second or third game, like uh, DTs, uh, getting adept, a, a, a good adept warp in from a warp prism once, like... I'm not sure Zake can take Ethermal in a macro game, but it's kind of where Zake is like, doing those really important slip-ups with his main army. But I certainly believe he can get those early advantages, and then take a macro game, perhaps. I really feel like all we've seen from Zaki though is his versus Zerg. I know that isn't true. I think we saw like a PvP with him even, but I just, all, that's all I remember is versus, is versus Zerg. Oh well. Yeah, I don't know that we cast him playing Terran actually, because uh, you know, of course the Damaga game is the one that sticks out to me. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, Blink is on the way. Uh, pretty quick Liberator here, but that's just to follow up this Wood of Mine drop. Now, typically you've been seeing a lot more Terrans just. It is a Widow Mine drop, but like one Widow Mine or even zero Widow Mines. I got two of them, two probes, not a big deal. Um, and then all Marines. And then the second medevac that follows up is the one that drops off the Widow Mines, right? Uh, that seems to be getting a lot more popular, but since he went so fast into the Liberator, not a second medevac, that's obviously not really an option for him. So this attack's not ever going to do very much, unfortunately. Two Widow Mines can get an entire mineral line. Uh, Eight marines can kill pylons, stalkers, mothership cores. Two marines and a wood of mine are going to be at best half a mineral line, and that's only if Ethereum gets kind of lucky. Liberator? Thank you. Mmm, medevac goes down, unideal for sure. Wood of mine goes down as well, and the mothership core is no problem. Four probes went down to the Liberator, that was pretty quick. It's gonna go up to a total of six gateways and a war prism. Uh, third base is clearly Oops. down. Do you have the uh, the income in the bottom right showing right now? Because oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, the thermal is totally it's like doubled and then the bit. I guess the, the combination of denied mining plus the mule effect really showing strong there. So okay, resources lost not so crazy, but resources lost actually a little bit more hidden and bigger than you would expect. Yeah, but soon one sake replaces the six probes. Oh, seriously, seriously? It's one marine, I didn't think he was going to do anything. Uh, and sends him off to the third base, he will have better mining, but it's taking him so long to get there that Euthermal might have his third CC done. But I wanted to draw attention to the six gateways, they're actually um, being chrono boosted as well. Uh, and the oh, warp wow. prism, so he really is going to commit quite hard to this blink attack, trying to catch Euthermal oh, with geez. very limited production. But, I mean, tanks are up, marine count's not he bad. Has, I think, he I should know. be able to hold this. I agree. It looked a little bit tempting before the rest of the army came in, and it still probably looks tempting because you realize they don't have stim. Oh, hold up, maybe not, because ah, uh, okay, just back away. I was gonna say if you didn't snipe that observer, that'd be a lot it of free was, vision. Yeah, that it was, was a huge pickoff for Euthermal. That was like actually game game changingly important. Yeah, without that, he probably has to retreat with his bio, and then maybe Sake goes for either the natural or for the blink. And it's always a little questionable, you know. It is just blink soccer, even though there's a lot of them. They don't have that many up. They don't have any upwards. Um, and that plus one or anything. And a tank with micro medevac does add a lot of damage. But those he's gonna try and commit to this. He's, as long as he's out of range of the tank. These units still don't have stim. It's 20 seconds away from finishing. A couple of adepts being warped in too. And Zaki might just 
have oh, this. The tank uh, is really low. He's pretty clumped up, though. Unable to target fire that tank down. Widowmind's getting some great shots as well. And Sim is so close to that, finishing. That Widowmind did the equivalent oh, God. of just being all the stalkers. I don't know why I say Zaki's got this. Because every single time I say it, it's like that's the <laughs> moment where Widowmind's explode, <laughs> Banelings yeah. hit, force fields disappear. Like, he really goes from a fairly good looking fight. Not like absolutely game ending. It's not like he's throwing necessarily to, but just to like a super, super bad one. So it does look like a throw. You bring caster cursing to a whole new level. Zaku. With, with Zaka, I should just really, I should, I should absolutely stop. But he had adepts covering his blink stalkers. He had so many blink stalkers, but they were all choked up right here. The adepts eventually went down, of course. They can't live forever. And that tank added just so much splash. The fact that he was unable to retreat the blink stalkers or the or the war prism, ideally both, is also just that's not supposed to happen. He probably gets pushed back nine games out of ten, but he has such a you know an okay force behind you. He's like, okay, I'll take that trade, but that ended up being a really bad one. Well, the attack to the south and that third base can be a little bit scary. This is the best part about holding a defense. Well, you usually have a nice counter attack, but the army supply here is not that much. You've almost got a good chunk of supply, but unfortunately, some of it's still at home. The tank, for example, as well as the rally units. So, this meager force of units, while nicely saturated with marauders, still can't really kill Saka's army. Nor can it just dive in for a base snipe either. Really wants to lure oh, them into those widow mines for hits. Not going to happen, but picks up, walks away. Widow mines do end up getting some hits. Those are nice force holds, but those are equally nice pickups, so nicely done. And just remember that every time you look at the Sakai's army, it should have probably like eight more stalkers and a war prism still up in the top left trying to do damage. It's all things that Sakai has to replace. Euthermal's been in positions against Protoss before where he's up 20 supply, army supply that is, and you know, still can't quite end the game because it's, you know, it's just it's too reliant on Liberators or Widowmind's getting good hits, but he's up 30 army supply. And the Liberator is already on the front lines. He's got reinforcements coming in as well, and Sake is... He's, he's almost there. He's almost to a decent fighting force, but upgrades are significantly in favor of Euthermal. Oh, he did not mean to do that. Pretty sure. Okay, he saves his upjets anyways. Liberator is gonna pose a problem. They get on top of a ramp. He needs that third base. He could blink past the Liberators, but then they just put him in front of the buyer there. Oh, this isn't gonna go well. Two more Liberators join. Oh my god, what am I gets a great hit. This looks like Euthermal's third base. I think he's got it. Again, the potential caster cursing. Make sure you calm down. I don't usually cast curse Euthermal. Okay. <laughs> Seems the only he's okay. If he uh. does get this third, that'll be really nice. I mean, he'll maintain that lead. The 1-1's one -one's already really good. I think he's in a fantastic spot where he could potentially win the game as is, but killing the base really secures that. Doesn't try to commit to the third base despite having what is a very good ground army with or without the Liberators. Just goes to the natural to take advantage of another bit of a choke area. Widowmind's perfectly covering the Liberators. Zaki's really running out of options. Oh, Widowmind's. Oh, army. That'll be game. Yeah, nicely done from Euthermal 2 to bring it back. Now tying the series up 1-1. One to -one And not falling out of the loser's bracket, more importantly. Correct? Still got an ace match to go to. And Zaki had a moment where it was probably very scary for Euthermal. But I don't know if he'll be able to replicate that. The last map is Dasson Station, I remember. <laughs> uh, it's because it's so, so interesting. And I, uh, I do believe it was Euthermal. Some of the veto process had a bit of complications, just because it's a bit different than, like, for instance, what we did with the coin flip. But I do yeah. know that Euthermal was... You, he was first, so he gets the last last pick as well. All right, also, uh, I'm going to check with the admins, make sure they're cool. That the other group was scheduled to start now, actually. Uh, so I pushed that an hour back on Team Liquid, and hopefully <laughs> that'll compensate for the time. Remaining in this group, at least. But we got a game three to go to and another best of three, guys. So sit tight, stick around. We'll be back in two minutes, and we'll see you soon. Welcome back. We are getting into Das on Station. Das on Station. Das on Station. I didn't get that. Let me real ID. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting ace match to come to. That's for certain. Yeah, I. Uh... 
This isn't as deadly a map for TVP as it is for TVZ, especially with you thermal style. But it still, I think, favors um, Terran. The tank pushes still good against Protoss. Thermal can certainly bring those out. He does on Frozen Temple uh, quite often. And uh, I'm actually thinking of what, what Protoss can do on this map. Protoss can go for fast Tempest, believe it or not. They can kind of play it like people try to play Arena or Ruins of Endion, but it's not super common. There's also like this proxy Stargate build that's that's super deadly for like, you know, casuals, <laughs> basically, but can sometimes work against uh, pro gamers and pro games. You put it like right behind them and it's it sucks, but I don't think Zoxy could do that. He can be aggressive. He can go for Dark Templars, but I don't think he's like, well, he did cannon rush. Yeah, I was going to say, he can't. Know. <laughs> the guy who can rush is absolutely the guy who's want to be BS with TTs, but... Uh, okay, we're going to get into the game, and as this loads in, spawning on the right bottom side of Dawson Station, it's going to be the red Protoss player, Zucke. And top left as the blue Terran, he is Euthermal. This is like the only map I, I feel like I do Rotterdam-esque intros when it comes to describing player locations. Although I did learn more recently, I guess that's more of a European thing, just as far as like I guess order of operations, like where you're probably top left or left top side. But the fact that these bases are kind of in the middle makes it a little bit weird. And just in case at Wait. this point there's anyone who hasn't seen this map before, it is a bit odd. You see these gold bases in between. Luckily, those aren't so bad nowadays. But with both you thermal and sake players who can stick stalkers and marines and other things outside them, I don't think we're going to see anyone rush to those golds. How did you introduce... What's the European style? I always say, like, in the bottom left side. Or, no, so so normally I would be, like, in the bottom left. Right. But on this one, and from what I understand, I could be wrong. This might be just one French troll. I mean, I've been told the Europeans do it more like that anyways. Like, that's the order they do. So they'll be, like, bottom left side, not not left, or left bottom side, whatever. I, now I'm confused with how I'm saying it. <laughs> I feel like you've never said left bottom side. I always do on this map. I always do it differently. I don't huh, know. Huh, I didn't notice. So then I guess you can't remember now. So great. On the leftmost bottom side. That's how I started the intro for this one. Well, you would have been wrong because it's right. Well, rightmost bottom side. Fuck, <laughs> <here. But>, god <laughs> damn it. Doesn't matter. I hate you. I'm done. Irrelevant. <laughs> Irregardless. No, that's not a word. <laughs> I actually used to say that a lot thinking it of was. Of course, and I felt everyone silly did. learning that it wasn't. Yeah, everyone did. It's it not sounds like it should be though, right? Like it's not even a bad sounding word. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it is it's English, okay? Being English again. Unfortunately, it's not quite at that point, you know, where people say you did good and people are leading really well whatever, but like there's a certain point where everyone's going to say it, and languages adapt, and they evolve, and whatever, that eventually she's going to be like, stop trying to be that guy. But for, uh, uh, that word I just used. Oh my god, what word did I just use? Irregardless. Irregardless, there you go, thank you. Um, <laughs> nope, that's just completely wrong. Yeah. Alright, so anyways, we talked a lot about, like, the what-ifs here, getting into it, like, would there be DTs, would there be, like, Reapers, would there be anything silly from either player? It looks like it is actually pretty straightforward. However, for you Thermal's sake, I just want to point out his style of, like, Cyclones... Why does he do this? Okay, yeah, this is actually kind of... Yeah, the, well, actually, the Deep Weather is smart. That might actually be out of range of the pylon, I'm not sure. But, as I say, his style of going for Cyclones is going to pay off a lot better if this is the type of attack stock he's going to apply. Let's not forget, you don't just put them at the front on this map, you put them in the mineral lines too. The Marines going to walk away from this fight because they don't want to take it, but they also need to deal... The STVs have surrounded the pylons building inside the natural... Or, sorry, inside the main... But if either of these get overcharged, it's going to be dangerous, and I think he knows it as well. He might be best off just zoning out the mothership course. She's got no energy, so he puts the SCVs back on mining, cleans up those that... pylons, and now just has to worry about the front attack. By the way, that's what the Marine was looking for in the back there when he missed that probe, so... That could have been a lot more deadly. Yeah. And I kind of forgot this was certainly an option on Das on Station, was to be this aggressive with pylons, but I really don't think Zaka has executed it no. quite well enough. He's actually... Unfortunately, because the pylons up here never got up, the damage isn't going to continue. He does chase the adepts northwards, but as we can see, the mothership core not so dangerous. Oh. The marines can take on the current amount of adepts that there are. Not to mention this widow mines coming out too. But Zaki dedicates an interesting amount to this because there is the nexus back at home for him. 
there is a decent probe count, but he's moving towards the Stargate next. Yeah. That's where the Water Mine's gonna be extra helpful, but also maybe a bit of a bummer. Like, if they explode on the Adepts, that's great, that's Splash, but then they're not ready for the Oracle, it still could be bad news. Um, yeah, kind of like, we were talking about the Supply Depot, and you're right, like, at least he has one more Supply Depot than maybe he would have in another, you know, SimCity option. But it is more of the situation that when the reactor goes down, that's when you're like, oh shit, like, yeah. damn, I really wanted the reactor. And there's no saving that reactor if you actually want to get a wall off, as unfortunate as that is. Uh, what of mine does apparently shoot all against the Adepts, makes them a little bit easier to handle. How many SPs have gone down so far? Just three. Uh, Fleet Beacon is on the way, though, and I mentioned, oh, right, the, the Tempest, kind of that so style gross. of play. So, I can't remember, we just cast somebody recently who did this, if you right. remember who that was. And I can't. <laughs> nice. Alright, well, whether you're somebody like Sake, whether you're someone more hyped up like Neeb, I think the reality is Tempest don't take the craziest amount of control, but it, it's very important you use the terrain. It's like, well, you don't have to micro and stutter step and jump all over the map like Marines, for example. You do have to make sure you don't fly over too far that crescent in the middle of the map that would put you in range of said Marines. For you, Thermal, what's kind of interesting is the Cyclone, oh, maybe that'll be good, maybe it won't. But the sooner he scouts, the sooner he can start making Vikings and more importantly, lots and lots of Marines. Because right now, what he has, not going to cut it. It's so tricky, though. Like, on Arena, the reason it looks so good was that there was nothing here between their bases, right? So it's like, no low, or um, no ground? Of course, I'm going to go something that's abusive for air. And that's why you had to go Vikings. What makes this so tricky is that, well, okay, technically you can try and kite the Vikings into a ground army of Marines, and that looks fantastic. It also means that, like, High Templars can be put there. Yeah. And uh, once they get Storm, it's very difficult for the Terran to take on the army. Because by, by the time they have Storm, you know, you might have Ghosts, but it's still a question of who has a better control. Oh, and I actually enough, really like the focus on the Oracles. So and I the Mothership. The Oracle pickoffs are huge because those are, of course, what tag revelation and oh make the God. Tempest OP. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I thought that it had showed itself on a medevac, but now the Raider scouted anyway, so. Now I it know the Tempest. He, he actually goes for Magfield Accelerator, too. I love this. Cyclones don't have a lot of health. They're probably going to get focused down by the Tempest somewhat easily. But this will guarantee if they get a lock on, keep in mind, 800 damage? Tempest don't even oh, have 800 just... life. Nothing in this game has 800 life, I don't think. What Sorry, nothing Ultras that's have? not a building. Oh, there you go. Hey, Tincality. Ultras has how many? How much? 500. 500. Good guess, Swords Omnigrub. have 400. Mm, Battlecruisers cool. have like 550. Cool. Well, you know, you're right. Like, the Cyclone with the Magfield Accelerator is going to be good one way or the other. Because it's not just, you, you don't just have one Cyclone of damage going into this, right? You have the Vikings, you've got the Marines. You're going to be putting a lot of fire into these Tempests, ideally. Yeah. Ooh, I even love this Widowmine position. It's going to get shot off. Uh, before things get too heated, I want to remind everyone, because there's some discussion about it. So not only is WCA and WESG completely different tournaments, uh, now we know. It's also, there are also tournaments that don't reward WCS points, so don't get too excited about counting points again. I know we had a whole entire week when we were really excited about you thermal and whatnot. That actually has no effect here, so I don't affect BlizzCon at all. Um, if you thermal's out, he's just out of, out of money, which would still suck, but <laughs> uh, he still has that chance to go to Mexico. Alright, I thought things were going to get heated because the Tempest were moving over, but they, then they backed off, realizing that oh. maybe just pure Tempest wasn't going to be enough. Well, he's also a little bit worried about the Widowmine consistently firing at him. But what's cool about this yeah. is if the Tempest move out of the base and attacks you thermal, the Marines might not even be able to stim underneath them. But if they're busy attacking on the other side of the map, at the same time, Zaki won't be able to bring them home to defend. Mm -hmm. So I liked I liked initially where he'd put those medevacs to run out. I don't really know about coming up northwards like this. Uh, kind of funny, though, this Tempest giving him the zoning capabilities to take this gold is going to be nice to see. Also, that yeah. stasis trap has not, I think, been seen by you thermal. So I'm really worried about Marines like retreating into that later and getting completely shut down. Wow, he's double expanding. How often do you see a Terran do this? I mean, when you see Tempest, you know it's going to be a slow attack, slow pushing, and nothing that can really get around your bases really quickly. Yeah. I really wish you remembered what that last game was when we saw Tempest on this map. I can't even remember the Terran, to, to be honest, at this point. Like, I want to say it was like BCQ or something, but... Uh... That game ended quite poorly for the Terran. Uh, the Terran had what was almost a perfect army. You know, store, or sorry, uh, EMPs. Ooh, nice little drop here. 
EMPs, a lot of Vikings, a decent enough ground army. It was almost maxed out. It was a maxed out Protoss army. Like, it had a chance, you would think. And then this Viking EMPs was just, it was crushed. Uh, instantly drops 80 supply. It was, it was bad. So, uh, even though you thermal, like, he knows he has a lot of time. And the game probably will go on for another, like, five minutes at least. It's like, even if you do get maxed out, if Sake does as well... Are you still in an okay position, or does it feel uh, impossible to deal with? But man, he's killing a lot of probes. Oh shit. Oh boy. Oracle goes down again here. 14 probes was really nice. Did not expect that coming either. He's gonna run to the gold base, and I think probably just try and kill probes on his way out. Recognizing this, Saka just tries to run them away instead. Medivac barely getting out of there with any health alive. How did that probe do that? Okay, oh. 18 probes in total, more drops on the way, and this is really, it's kind of funny. He's like dropping and it's great and whatnot, but it's like his main army is actually going to be Cyclone Viking, Viking or something like that. Uh, what was that, a, what am I? I want something killed, three more probes. Uh, and, oh, more probes going to go down here. But yeah, there's so many Cyclones, and that probe luckily scouted that, but, you know, what are you going to do about it? You still want to get more Tempest, you still want to get... Um, I think to Storm, which is now trying to come up uh, here, but the last 21 probes, you've been replacing probes and building uh, bases. So he doesn't have this extreme number of Tempests. Six is still good, and they can micro. That's like the biggest thing about them, but not doing a great job microing away from the Cyclones. The lock-ons come on, it's really hard to get out of that range. Attack down to the south side is starting to kill buildings, it looks like. The lock-ons aren't going on the Tempest anymore, so the Cyclones are getting cleaned up here. Oracle's even helping kill those Marines. But now 43 yeah. probes, oh my god, the entire natural, I think. Uh... It's it's also that you throw him behind this, as you point out, he double expanded, he's got the extra oh, bases. Probes. It's not a problem for him to replace any of the army that he's losing, and he's not even losing that much. Cyclone, eight Marines at a time, I mean, his army is just going to be reinforced fully and entirely. Look at the middle of the map, for goodness sake. Yeah, I think you has got this. The key thing in this game is just not letting the Protoss army get to that that point, that like, you know, Storm plus 8 Tempest plus a good number of other units. He caught him while he was still down, he killed so much of his economy, and he Thermal's not going to be out of this group yet. He will- what? Please stop, Arizona. He's going to go on to face a uh, rematch, actually, against Harstum. Talk about that group curse. Mm, that'd be totally. interesting. It existed in Ting Season 1, not so much season two. We'll see if it exists in WCA. Mm. GG. GG, ladies and gentlemen, you thermal survives to fight into the finals of the group. Yes, he does. The videos have to get underway and the map has to be made. Thank you to Meat Pop 13 for the six month free sub. Oh yeah. And Billy Zane One for the eleven month free sub. Love you seven guys uh, i don't know how long of a break will be gone for this time but uh we do have to get these last videos set and they've been taking a bit of time so stick around guys we'll be back as soon as we possibly can you throw them on hearthstone for the finals of the group when we return